Okay, so our speaker tonight, um, his name is Pastor Anthony Hinga. He's, yes, let's appreciate him. Yeah, he's already here with us. Um, he's a minister of the word of God. He's a born again Christian. He serves with the school ministry, a ministry that reaches out to young people in high school and universities. Can I use this one? All right. Okay. Yeah, so he worships under the firstborn Christian church. Yes, he's a husband to one beautiful wife uh, and a father of two beautiful girls. He's an alumni of the University of Nairobi. Okay. Yeah, he's an alumni of the University of Nairobi. Yeah, he's passionate about ministering to the young people. So, ladies and gentlemen, help me bring on stage our speaker. Yeah, karibu sana. You can join me on stage. Yeah. May I pray for you? All right. So, Heavenly Father, I lift up Pastor Hinga to you as he delivers your word to the congregation. I pray the Lord you will fill him with your Holy Spirit and grant him wisdom and insights. Lord, grant Pastor Hinga the boldness to preach with authority and humility and may the message be a reflection of your heart and a beacon of your light to all of us who hear it. Surround him with your peace and presence and be with him. I also pray for all of us here who will be listening that the Lord will prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the message. Uh, let your word resonate deeply within us and may you let it lead to transformation and growth in our faith and in our walk with you. Thank you, Father, for the calling you have placed on his life. And may his preaching bring glory to your name and draw all of us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Karibu sana. Amen. Give Jesus a clap above your heads. Hallelujah. Come on, above your heads for the King of Kings. Give him a shout too. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. God is good. Come on, God is good. And all the time. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them that's from Pastor Anthony. Amen. Come on, neighbor. Hakoparet Hama. All right. Nime kupea permission. Uneza Hama. Look for a neighbor who wants to cooperate. Now give a neighbor a high five. Tell them that's from Pastor Anthony. Auna neighbor. Nani ana neighbor? Amen. One more time, give Jesus a clap above your heads. Hallelujah. My goodness, it's such a pleasure to be here. I know we were supposed to be here in February, but look what the Lord has done. Somebody shout amen. So for the ones that are seeing me for the very first time, my name is Pastor Anthony. I'm born again. I love my generation. I love my generation with a passion. And uh, it's not my first time being here. I've been here several times. And uh, by the grace of God, I think I know some of us. I know Raymond, Crispus, Salim. Yeah, I'm conversant with many of us. Karega right here. Yeah, and uh, I, I thank God for each and every one of us. But just before I go far, uh, Mr. Pianist, you can just reduce Kidogo. Uh, just before I go far, I want to apologize. I know this is a very big day for the elders, but I was late. It is not in my custom to be late. So, kabla mtu anisikizi akiwa na waru hapa. Yeah. Please naomba mnisamehe. Or I can also see MC Timeless here. Pigia MC Makofi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cyrus is here. Appreciate Mr. Cyrus too. I went to see him in Homer Bay. Yeah? I went to see him in Homer Bay. Yeah, he's doing an amazing job right there. Amen. So it's not in my culture to be late, elders. Where are the elders? I was told they're in t shirt What be elders? Now, let me just explain why I was late. I was from a safari and I apologize. It's not in my custom. One of my cousins passed on uh, last week. Uh, the, he was diagnosed with cancer. So he passed on. So we had a burial. And uh, we traveled, I got home late, but God is good that we are here to glorify the King of Kings. Am I forgiven? Come on, am I forgiven? Good. Nipigia makofi sasana revelation. Good. And so I also brought my beautiful wife. 
just before she stands, we, we are good. <laughs> Say amen. Pigia wa ifiangu makufi ya napokuja. Hallelujah. Father of two, and the future is great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The last time Karega wrote that profile, we were father of two. Now it is father of three. And the future is, is great. Say my amen. <laughs> so my wife is here. She, she's allowed me to serve Jesus. She has given me permission to be with my generation. She doesn't mind people texting me because she'll trust the call of God in my life. Unajua kuna 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 watu my sister kuna unaweza pata wife ambaye anauliza nani huyu anaku text. I thank God that she doesn't even have to scroll my phone because she trusts the man. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Okay. Nime nimethibitisha. So she's going to say hi to you. Don't you have 30 minutes. I'm going to make sure I'm going to use that minutes wisely. Is that okay? Good. Praise God, guys. Mkosalama. Good job, graphics and videography. That was really nice. Uh, my name is Milando Hinga, a mother of three, if you count this one. Uh, let's say four to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with you. Happy to be here. And congratulations, elders. Yeah, happy for you. Musikwena pressure, ya golden rush. Sawa. I don't know whether that's what you call it here, but back in campus, I studied in KU. We used to call it the golden rush. That's where you are told this is the the blood, the, the sea with the most fish in your life. So keep it a season, your chances of getting a partner zime shoot downwards. So, what all kona pressure ya kukua hit on na kuhitiana. So, and then the pressure is real, so you, you're saying yes, Oma, you're settling because you don't want to leave campus without someone, but don't succumb to that pressure. Personally, I didn't leave campus na mtu, but look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, happy to be here and congratulations. All the best out there. Amen. Just before you leave, what would you, if you knew something before you left campus, what was that one thing that you would have done better after leaving campus? Before you left, like the elders that are right here, if you're take, taken back to where they are and you were told to correct one or two things, what would that be? Back in the campus years, um, uh, okay, transitioning into the real world. <laughs> I think just don't succumb to the pressure of the golden rush. Yeah, because the pressure is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. The pressure is real. Say my amen. Golden Rush. Almost three guys almost snatched my wife now. But Mungu ni nani? Sema amen. Pigia bibi yangu makofi ya napoketi chini. Amen. It is good to marry your friend. Amen. Amen. We also have Sharon. Sharon, do you want to say hi? Come and say hi. Give Sharon a clap. Sharon joined us. Sharon joined us. She's part of us. And we are preaching Jesus with her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. What time? Praise God. <laughs> I, yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, I was right here seated as an elder two years ago. And it's such an amazing feeling to just come back and see the living stones transiting. It also reminds me of how old I'm becoming. And I'm glad to see what the Lord is doing in your lives. Uh, my name is Anne Sharon Mwangi. I'm born again. I am the third wheeler here. <laughs> I'm a member of the TSM. And uh, eh, oh, by the grace of God, I'm a construction manager and, uh, <laughs> and a master's student at, at the University of Portsmouth. Yeah, we thank the Lord. 
Amen. Appreciate Sharon with the club. Hallelujah. Amen. And Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you for the elders. Thank you for this journey. Thank you for this far. It is by your grace that they can stand and testify that you've done them well. And look what the Lord has done. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Speak to us. Direct our hearts. In Jesus' name. See what the Lord has done. Somebody wave your right hand to the Lord. Tell him. See what the Lord has done. Close your eyes and focus on the greatest of him. And what we sing it out has come to pass. See what the Lord see. One more time, give him a wave of offerings. Tell him, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for. What we sing it out has come to pass. See what Stand. One more time, throw your hands so high. Tell him, Lord, we give you glory. See what the Lord has done. Say, see what the Lord. Oh, see what the Lord has done. Say, the Lord. And what we waited for, what we has come to pass. Sing it out, church. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, oh, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. And what we waited for. What we waited for. Has come. Somebody appreciate the Lord for his doing this. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Oh, I also want to Elder Ruto. Give a clap to Elder Ruto from PCA. He's right from here. And we bless God. Somebody open the book of Psalms chapter 1. The Bible says, I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, what delight comes to the one who follows God's ways. The Bible says, he won't walk in step with the wicked, nor share the sinner's way. He says, nor be found sitting in the corner seat. The Bible says, verse 2, that his passion is to remain true to the word of I am, meditating day and night on the true revelation of light. Verse 3. He says he will keep standing or he will be standing firm like a flourishing tree. Underline this. Planted by God's design. Deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss. Bearing fruit in every season of life. He is never dry never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. But how different are the wicked? The Bible says they are like chaff blown away by the wind. The wicked will not endure the day of judgment for God will not defend them. Nothing they do will succeed or endure for long for they have no part with those who walk in truth. Six, last verse. He says, but how different is for the righteous? Somebody say, how different 
Come on, say with me. Say how different. Say it again. Say how different is for the righteous. The Bible says, but how different it is for the righteous. The Lord embraces their paths as they move forward while the way of the wicked leads only to doom. Let me read that again. But how different it is for the righteous. The Lord embraces their paths as they move forward while the way of the wicked leads only to doom. I know and believe that we are here because we are celebrating a journey that has not been easy. A journey that has, has taken uh, years. A journey that has not been a walk in the path, park. But one of the things that I want to submit to people or to us as, as a generation and to us as the, as, the, as the beloved of God is that Philippians chapter 1 verses 6 is very uh, elaborate to define the life of a believer. Because Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 talks about the one who began a good work. The Bible says that he is faithful to bring it to accomplishment. Oh sorry, I forgot to give you my topic. My topic today is journeying out. And then I have a subtopic down there, planted by God's design. Alright? So journeying out down there, uh, put a, put a subtopic subtopic, planted by God's design. Look at this. Media team, if you go with me, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says that he who began a good work in us is faithful to fulfill it. Um, I wish my monitors, one of them would face me. I'm struggling because they're all behind me. I would be glad. Or oh, you put back my this pulpit right here, I'll be glad, one of them, because I'm struggling. I'm going to another cash after this. Thank you. So look at this. The Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you, the Bible says, will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. Saints of God, look at this. God is marked by how well he begins a journey, and not only how well he begins it, but how well he ends it. The Bible comes in and introduces God. The Bible says, if he began it, he's going to end it. How many people have begun marriages? I asked it the other day. But they were not faithful enough to bring it to the end. In other words, there, was, there were children that, were, that grew up without fathers. Why? Because there were people who began something, but they never followed it to the end. Let's go with me. How many people began businesses and just because they, they did not make profit towards the very end or towards them getting to a place where they can have a breakthrough they, they, they give up they are so many saints let me tell you something many people began even in our campus beloved elders I know there are people who began with you but they are not where you are and so the Bible says that God begins oh I love this but he does not leave it at halfway. The Bible says when he begins it, he brings it to pass. Somebody shout amen. And so that's to help you realize that the God we walk in and the God we walk with, he's not just a beginner. Alpha and, come on, talk to me, alpha and. So whatever he began, says of God, whatever he began, the Bible says he is able to bring it to pass. And so my beloved saints, while we are here, it is because there are some people who began a journey. And when they began that journey, they have carried it through to the very end. And that's why we are here to celebrate them. But look at this. You will realize that when some of us sit down there, you know, uh, I've been in such meetings elsewhere. And I know, kuna mahali Come on, True story, am I right? Yeah. Kuna mwingine alienda akachukua loan so that I can be in school and I can finish through my journey and I can come out successful. Look at what God has done in your life. There is someone else who probably uh, we went all our way out and, and we went and took loans 
so that we can be in school. But look at this. You are not just a success because of beginning a journey. You are a success because you have finished the journey. Now let me take you back. I know we have lovers of football here and I like giving that example. Allow me to give examples. You are to a man, you are a man. You are to a man. You are to a man. Alright, look at this guys. So girls, uh, ladies, I can hear some ladies in UN have love football. Alright, look at this. So Mufunze Bibiango Kubeda football, eh? Alright, look at this. So you'd imagine our striker to be a team Thomas and Asema Manu. Aye, all right. Look at this. So let's assume Manu is competing against Arsenal. Oh, that will never happen. <laughs> all right. And watch a basi to me a Gormahi and if you only chop a mawe, see you. Gormahi has what was Gormahi? No Manu. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Just go with me before I give you three points and then I'm out of your way. Look at this. So let's assume it's a football match. All right? So let's be neutral. It's a football match. And the striker. Yeah, the striker. All right. Mr. Chairman, all right. Mr. Chairman, all right. Mr. Chairman, all so we have our, our, our striker. What do we call him? No, no, no. Your, your football name. What do you say? I'm a Sema Aleki. I am Aleki. I am with Aleki, the pro, right? All right. So, Ale, Angalia. Side, side, right? Good. So look at this, guys. Just, just follow me. Just follow me. So we have our striker right here. Okay. So our striker comes with the ball. Comes with the ball from midfield. Alright. Then Akifika kwa gola. Gola ako side. Alright. So he has a leeway of scoring. See uh, and so alekia kwa no mona aleki, eh? Alafu wako na mpira, akifika kwa goalpost, badala ya kusko, aleki turns back. Simama midfield, hapa. Let me ask you a question. However beautiful aleki alichenga watu wote. However, however aleki aliangusha kila mtu na akaingiza chobo zote. Raymond, let me tell you something. Aleki didn't score a so however he ran with the ball all through the field, let me tell you something. If Alex didn't score the goal, he is not ranked a scorer. And can I shock you, beloved saints? So many of us are like this. We begin journeys, but our journeys never come to an end. And saints of God, today I want you to realize the God that we model, the Bible says, he begins and he does what? Come on, talk to me. He begins and he does what? He ends or he finishes. So if we are modeling Christ, we need to begin journeys and we need to finish the same journeys. So what have you begun? You began your career life. Follow it through and don't you give up. Regardless of the mountains and regardless of the obstacles, remain steadfast. That is the language of achievers. And when you learn how to do that, you will realize there is a resilience that grows from inside you. And you will realize that regardless of the challenges, you are able to mark your goals. I mean, you are able to, 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 to uh, what's the word? You are able to sit down and analyze and see how far have I come. So if I am him and I come through and I score, that is one goal. I score one goal. Yeah, your goal. That's a goal. Pick your Aleki let you throw my coffee. So Aleki has scored one goal. So in life, if Aleki doesn't do any other thing, Aleki has scored how many goals? One. And so in life, let me tell you something. 
You are not round by how many things you begin. You are round by how many things you begin and consistently finish. So if I begin things and I leave them halfway, I am not a success. If I begin things and just leave them hanging, we will just say he began, but he never finished. But if you are one who accomplishes goals, let me tell you something, you will be round among the people that have, have, have achieved something. So I want to ask you a question. What have you achieved with your life? What have you achieved with your, with your, with your plans? The Bible says, acknowledge me in your plans. What have you achieved with those plans? Leave alone what God has in store for us. What you have expected, what you have planned, because it tells us in Proverbs 3, that acknowledge me in your plans. So it is expected of everyone that is at the sound of my voice to have plans. So besides what God has in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 tells us to acknowledge God in your plans. So I want to ask you a question. What have you accomplished? What will you accomplish? Let me tell you, you have to have a resolve in your mind. That I am that kind of a man. I am that kind of a woman that will not give up anyhow. Somebody shout amen. amen. That you will not give up anyhow. When other people are busy complaining, when other people are busy making excuses, you are busy making your strides and you're moving from one step to another. Give these guys a clap as they sit down. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. So I want to tell us something this wonderful uh, night. That God, uh, um, Psalms chapter 1 where we read, the Bible says that there are men that are planted by God's design. Just have 15 minutes and then I'm out of your way. God has men that are planted by his design. And you would wonder, what, what, are, what are this kind of men? The Bible says they are likened to a tree. All right? They are likened to a tree. And he says that they that are planted by God's design, he says they are, they are roots go deep by the waters. That means they never run dry. Actually, Jeremiah 17 verses 5 to 8 says it better. Jeremiah 5, I mean 17 in Asema, that those that trust in men, all right? They that trust in men, he says, cast are them. Can I submit to our elders today that as you journey out, please don't trust in a man. Please don't you rely in a man. Why? Men can disappoint you anytime. Men put boundaries for you. Look at this. Men put dragnets for us. Somebody's wondering, what are you saying? I, I, in my team, several ladies have come to tell me that, you know, that somebody, alimtafutia job, and kumbe siyo job alikuwa ratak. He wanted something beyond the salary. You know what I mean. And so you realize, if, if I depend on men, men have limitations. Men have limit. let me say that again, men have limitations. There is only where men can get to, but they cannot take you past there. Look at this. The Bible says, this is what the Lord says. Cast is what? Come on, read with me. Cast is what? Come on, say it again. Cast is? And who does what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look at verse 6. Let's go. Verse 6 says what? Want to go? He will be like? Uh, what happens to him? Do you know why I realize they will never see prosperity when it comes? It is because if God is here and my eyes are looking at a man, if prosperity comes my way, it will bypass me. Not because I don't have eyes, but because my eyes are elsewhere. Oh. So that means that as I journey out, as I move to where God has called me to move to, I want to submit to men at the, at the sound of my voice. I want to submit this to women. If you are busy depending and looking at men, 
Let me tell you what will happen to you. When prosperity comes, other versions say, I think NKJV says, they will not see when the goodness comes. So in other words, mungu akitutenda wema, wewe hautaona, wewe utashindo ukiangalia mtu, ukimtegemea, na, 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 na mungu ana, ana, anapitisha wema wake, lakini you have nothing to partake of it. Why? Because your eyes are elsewhere. And so this wonderful night, I want us to begin to fix our eyes on where our help comes from. Let's finish this. He says, uh, thank you. He says, and shall not see when what? When good comes. He says, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. I don't have time to explain that. Go to verse 7. He says, verse 7, let's go. Or verse 7, let's go. One, two, go, but let's. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Uh-huh. And whose hope in the Lord. Say it again with a loud voice. To go. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Uh-huh. And whose hope is the Lord. Go to verse 8. Uh-huh. The last verse. Let's go. Uh, team. Thank you. Let's read this with a loud voice. One, two, go. For he shall. For he shall be like a tree planted by the water. Uh-huh. He spreads out his roots by the river. Uh-huh. And will not fail in uh-huh. 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 Somebody give God a clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Even if I don't explain any other thing, this is a characteristic of a man that is planted by God's design. The Bible says that number one, they will not fear when heat comes. Let me tell you something. If you're planted by God's design, point number one, you will not fear when heat comes. What does it mean when heat comes? You will realize that seasons are bound to happen. In my life, even when I cleared campus, seasons came. Let me give you a story to encourage somebody. So once upon a time when I cleared campus, I had my sister introduce me and say that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm from here. So when I cleared school, I had connections. When I'm talking about trusting in men, I know what it means. I had connections. In other words, uh, there are people who would tell me that wewe nipatie makaratasi zako. Eh, mimi ni nani? My aunt is in high court, so I could take my papers, and then my other friend is in the chambers. I took my papers, and then I basked, and I knew it's automatic. Man. True story. I'm still in this point that says that they will not fear when heat comes. And so I remember it was so hard for me. I, I waited. So that he would, one of my friends would tell me, ah, now we are reviewing salaries. My friend, Ajua, you need dollar in ongezeka. The next million, we are furnishing the office. You know how many years I waited? Three years. <laughs> Rounding up to four. Nikiambiwa office. Nikiambiwa salary review. <laughs> Na salary review hata tujaingia job. Nikiambiwa sasa tuko kwa board meeting tunawaongelelea tuna nini. How many years? <laughs> Boy child is waiting like this. And that time the young man is preaching Jesus. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm praying for people to even go out of the country. Now wanaenda. Wananiambia anto I got my visa. Then I was not a pastor. <laughs> now mbia wengine wanapata job. One day I went to God Mr. Ruto. So angry. And I asked God, God, why are you so unfair? Why are you so unfair? Mona mimi unanionea hivi. Haka niambia my young man, why are you, who told you to look for a job? Wow. So my eyes were elsewhere. How many years? My eyes were elsewhere. Four years. But yet goodness was passing me by. But I didn't see an inch. Do you know what that told me? When God told me that, I did not even wait for him to finish that statement. I went and registered my company. True story. I was 20 something years. And when I went to register my company, I was very naive. I even didn't know how to go about it. But I did it. I did it. But you would realize there was so much, there was so much uh, fear around me. There, because my season, was not adding up. I'm looking at my, my friends and my peers. They are all moving and making strides. But I'm here. Waiting for salary review. 
What are you doing? I even used to say, I used to see myself in that company. Because I used to travel all over the world and I'm like, man, that would be me. My selfie, I was plane. My brother, it didn't happen. So long story short, we were never employed in those companies. But we learned how to trust in God. And God in turn opened doors for these people. And right now, they are not employees, but they are employers. And so you will realize that our seasons are different. But don't you fear when heat comes. Why? Because you're planted Ooh, by the waters. So point number two. He says their leaf are evergreen. My goodness. So that means that regardless of the season they are in, the seasons don't affect them. In other words, they are not affected by by the economy of this world. Let me ask you, how do you base, how, 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 do you, how do you align your language, even in these trying times? How do you align it? Let me tell you, if you are the type of people who sit down and say, Nikugumu, Nakwambia, you shall eat the fruit of your lips. Look at your neighbor eye to eye. Tell them you shall eat. <laughs> Come on, look at another one. Tell them you shall eat the fruit of your lips. So ask them, what have you been confessing? <laughs> so if you're saying there are no jobs, prepare your granaries. You shall eat the fruit of your lips. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so their leaves are evergreen. So regardless of the, of the seasons around, the Bible says if they are planted, their leaves are evergreen. So you will never come at one time and find them dry. Why? Because they are ever green. Moving on because of time. Look at this. It says, and will not be anxious. In what? They will never be anxious in the year of drought. So in other words, when drought comes, it will not cause anxiety to them. When hard times are there and they are bound to come, they will not shake you. Why? Because you are one that is planted by the waters. In other words, you're planted by God's design. Somebody shout amen. Now, I love this. It says, and will cease, and, and they are, and no, no will cease from yielding fruit. What does, when I read this scripture, I, I was, I think, in KMTC. I read this to KMTC, Homerby. And I told them something about this part here. I told them, when God says that our, our, we will never cease from yielding fruit, that means that barrenness is far away from you elders. I just had one amen. Do you know what is barrenness? I'm not just talking about the barrenness of the womb. But you will realize that barrenness is, you, you never yield fruit. You try this, it never works. You try this, it never works. The Bible says, they that are planted by God's design, he says, they are always, they, are, they, are, they will never cease to yield fruit. In other words, they will always be fruitful. God has called us to be fruitful. Look at a neighbor next to you, tell them, God has called you and I to be fruitful. Somebody say it again, say, God has called you and I to be fruitful. And so as I begin to wind up, I want to give you three points only, and then I'm out of your way. God has called you and I to be fruitful. So in our lives, we will never be ranked by how many people clapped for us, but we will be ranked, and we will be uh, God will celebrate us by how fruitful we are. How fruitful are you in that which God has planted you in? How fruitful are you? And as fruitful as you are, I mean, uh, how fruitful you are, that's how God will rank all of us. So as I wind up, as I said it, I want to give you three points just to ponder about them. In the journey ahead, number one, lay off unnecessary weights. Lay off what? Come on, lay off what? Lay off unnecessary weights. What are, what are unnecessary weights? Unnecessary weights is what you don't need in your journey. There are so many things you will realize, beloved saints. There are so many things around you that sometimes unajiekeanga, 
na hauhitaji kwa hii safari Bwana Yesu asifiwe Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 tells us better I'm not going to read that but it says that when men learned how to lay off unnecessary weights there's something that happened to them they were able to fix their gaze on Jesus So I want to submit to somebody at the sound of my voice lay off unnecessary weights There are things that you can put on yourself as you're moving out and you will realize for the journey that you're headed safari ni ndefu lakini umebebanisha wengine wamebebanisha pass zao wengine wamebebanisha vitu mingi sana na unakumbuka the more you carry those burdens the more the journey becomes weary so lay off unnecessary weights can i submit to my elders today if you have a grudge with somebody just forgive them If you have a grudge with somebody just forgive them. If you carry bitterness within you those are unnecessary weights. Forgive. Some here safari ni ndefu. Ambia give an able to a neighbor. Mwambie safari ni ndefu bana. Mwambie weka mizigo chini. You know one day I carried somebody nikambeba kwa gari amekaa kwa gari na amebeba bag yake. Nikamwambia eh weka bag chini akasema oh ni hata nilisahau <laughs> yani amebeba bag imagine kama sasa bro umekupea lift badala uweke bag chini unabeba hivi unabeba bag na umebebwa <laughs> are you seeing this nikamwambia akaniambia ah nilisahau let me tell you something unnecessary weights will make the journey weary so point number one, lay off unnecessary weights somebody say i will lay off unnecessary weights Let them off those relationships that never worked. Kama uliwachwa ama uliachana. Sema saidia baba. Lay off. Tell your neighbor once again, lay off unnecessary weights. Let me tell you for a fact my brethren I'm winding up Karega just 2 minutes and I'm out of your way lay off those unnecessary weights Safari ninde Exactly Safari ninde fu So we can go with all the baggage in, with us yet the journey is so long Saints of God you need to lay off those unnecessary weights Somebody say that the people that forgive faster live longer So how fast do you forgive There are people mwenye wako na graduate na na na, na nursery school teacher. <laughs> Sema shetani yashindwe. <laughs> lay off what? Somebody lift up your right hand and say I will lay off unnecessary weights. Come on say it again say I will lay off unnecessary weights. Number two, focus. All right? Point number two. So point number one, lay off unnecessary weights. Number two, focus. Do you know what focus does? It prevents you from destruction. And that's where the enemy is targeting you. Because if the, you know the enemy might not look at this, the enemy might not find you in a bar. Mm, very true. The enemy may not find you in corruption, but the enemy knows a weapon that he can use and they are two for a believer, either destruction or procrastination. So you realize that men are distracted. They are distracted and so they lose focus. I want to tell you as you're churning out one of the things even if you forget all the things that I'm saying I want you to realize this my elders learn how to focus Do you know lack of focus is what has led to mipango ya kando How somebody asked how It is because if you focus on your wife the third wheel will never appear But when you're distracted Sema saidia baba. <laughs> When you're distracted, that and somebody will come in and tell you, "Ah, you can be a jack of all trades." Let me tell you something. You will be a master of. Now nah, that's what we were taught in primary and it applies even now. Learn how to focus. Are you in business? Learn how to focus. You will realize that the men who focused, they were persistent enough, they broke some barriers. So you and I need to focus. Lift up your right hand and say I will learn how to focus. 
Come on, say it again. Say, I will learn how to focus. Say it again. Say, I will learn how to focus. Second last point. Be patient. Woo. All right. Be what? Be patient. You will realize that men, one of the things that is ailing our generation is that we don't have patience, Cyrus. Hatuna subira. And that is what is ailing our generation. The other day, we were talking with some people who are a little elderly. And they were telling us, they were telling me rather, that they are worrying for a generation that is coming. Because the level of patience they had in their marriages, I, she, they were saying, I don't really think this generation can stand such kind of, of, of trouble. They can't. What, what, how, do you, how, do you, how do you walk with a man? Like I had Kathy Kuna talk and she was saying that when, when, when they were dating with the husband, oh, the husband was not driving but she was driving. Have you heard that story? And when they were going home, she would, she would let the husband drive. How many of you would do that? Sayo, boy child, I a vision. Lakini yana kitu. And yet, this woman, and one day she was asked, what did you, what did you see with this man? Akasema, I caught the vision of the man. And what happened? I was patient. So I want to ask you, are you patient when results don't speak? Then yes, zina ongelelewa hazi onge hivo, hazi hivo. Are you still ready to stick? Are you still ready to stick to that idea or business idea and pursue it through? Are you ready to stick from, from being employed from that lowest point and, and, and are patient enough to see yourself headed to where God wants you to head? You need to apply patience. Somebody shout amen. In my generation, God is telling us that we are able to, to exercise patience. Lift up your right hand. I don't have time to explain further. Lift up your right hand and say, God, I will be a patient man or woman. Come on, say it again. Say, I will be a patient man. Last and not the least. Oh. Last and not the least. That's point number? Four. Let me make it five. Point number four. Allow the making, or in other words, allow the process. Allow the process. Last and not the least, know the season. All right? Know the season. Don't you sleep during harvest. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 20 verses uh, 4 there, it says, uh, it says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Proverbs 10 verses 5 says, A wise youth harvests in the summer, but the one who sleeps during the harvest is a disgrace. Let me read you another version. It says, He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. Saints of God. What I'm trying to help you see as I'm winding up. Oh, let's read this together. Want to go? He who gathers. Let's read loud together. Want to go? Uh huh. Look at that. So you need to be a man and a woman who understands the season. What season are you in? What season? You know, the Bible says that even some ants are wiser than human beings. Oh. Somebody say, ouch. Ati hadi kuna ant, bro, inajua, ati, ati kiangazi inakam. What does it do? It goes and picks up, that's in Proverbs 6. Inachukua vitu, inaficha, ati jukuna kiangazi. Sisi, the sons of light, don't even understand the seasons we are in. My prayer for us is that we'll be men and women that understand the seasons that we are in. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I will be a wise son that understands the seasons in the name of Jesus. Give God a clap, hallelujah. Oh, there are many points, there are many points. There are many points. Let's stand up on our feet.
but I, I want to wind it up there. I want to wind it up there. I feel like I don't want to spend much time. I know I was late, so I don't want to spend much time. But look at this. As you're standing up, I want you to go with this one. Avoid comfort zones. Avoid what? Do you know what comfort zones do? In comfort zones, you never grow. Mm. If I am in a comfort zone, I will never grow. And so always push yourself to that extra mile. Push yourself to that extra kilometer. Don't you allow comfort zones around you. Comfort zones are very beautiful, but don't you allow a comfort zone, my elder, to be your abode. Skubali, don't allow a comfort zone to be your abode. Why? Because when a comfort zone becomes your abode, let me give you an example. When a baby uh, wets themselves, all right? When a baby wets themselves, you will realize that that baby will become a niece and they will start crying. If you don't attend to that baby, do you know what happens? The baby gets used to that which I'm fine. Na anazoe? Anazoe? Wengine wako darasa sai. Amen? Look at this. The baby anazoe. In other words, ako sawa sasa. Ata tukikawa na wa nikosa. Tukai tuwa wa zamuke. Why? Because the baby was used to that particular situation. Number two, ushai dungwa na muiba. Unasikia uchungu. Ikakote, uka, 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 uka gojea. Hadi ukazoea yu muiba. In other words, the pain become part of you. Hey, am I talking to people who live on planet Earth? <laughs> you will realize that there are so many things that will come your way and would want to have you in that comfort zone. I want to submit to my elders today. Don't you remain in a comfort zone. Push yourself that extra mile. In Jesus' name, give God a clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, is it God good? Come on, is it God good? I'm asking, is it God good? Isn't he amazing? I'm asking, isn't he amazing? Isn't he awesome? Isn't he glorious? Why don't you one more time appreciate him? And God, indeed, as we are standing in Zion, as we are standing in your presence, Lord, we thank you that we are the generation that shall shed off every unnecessary weight, that shall not walk in comfort zones, that shall be patient enough, oh my God, that shall do all that it takes, that this journey may be successful and may be what it ought to be. And so help us, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You go clapping, clap for God. Hallelujah.